so today we are going to be looking at creating a little city using the Google function. So following on from one of the tutorials in class, there was a lot of questions on how we got that little example city going. So the quickest way to check Greeble um, is to come into your create panel, your standard primitives, put a plane in, and come over to modify and look for Greeble. So just to make it a little bit neater, we might go 10 by 10. Oh, it's our segments, which are a bit. Um, and we get 10 segments by 10 segments. So that's looking a little bit neater. Um, can even come in, change that. There we go. So we can see little chunks of buildings, we can have little widgets, so you can have flat roofs with, or you can have some like air conditioning ducts and everything on top of them. Um, to turn that off, you just tick and untick. Um, but to have it more realistic, have a little couple boxes on top. We can come through and change the minimum and maximum heights, so we can have things being super small, or we can have them being a bit taller. So that'll automatically generate depending on that. So we're now going to go through how to use it as a city and do some parametric modeling, getting things to update live. All right, so we're going to start off in the create splines with a rectangle. We're then going to push it up to about 500 by 500. I'm going to zoom out to look at that on each view. We're next going to put in some lines, so for roads. So we're going to click and drag them across, implant them, escape, plant the road, escape, another one across here. Escape. So let's say they are our roads. We're then going to make a new layer for the center lines. Now we're going to add all of these lines into that layer. We are now going to select all of those lines, come up to edit, and come up to clone. And in this instance, we're going to do it as a reference and click OK. We're then going to see these come up. We're going to create another layer with those lines in them. So I've got two layers of lines. And we're going to, oops. We're going to rename the street ops, street operands. We are then going to turn these original lines off um, so we can hide them. We're then going to be using these few lines, coming over the modifiers, and we're going to find spline offset. There we go. We're then going to come down. We're going to have the end type as open butt. We're going to get rid of the original. So the original splines will be in this center lines column. We can then make the roads as big as I want. So we're going to, we'll leave it in this instance as 10, just an example. But depending on your road width, you'll want that distance. Most other things we can keep the same. And then if since it is a reference, uh, um, referenced line. If we click on this original line, come down to these vertices, we can edit where they go. So it's really helpful for making quick adjustments in your 3ds Max viewport. 
just so we can see the difference, we're going to just select and come up to these colors in the background. We're then going to change the color. So we have the outsides as one color. Turn those off. Bring them these insides in and have them and come and select them as a different color. So we've got them both on. It's really easy to see the outsides from insides. All right, so the next thing we're wanting to do is remove those streets from this rectangle. So we're gonna select this rectangle, come to the Create, Compound Shapes, Shape Boolean. We're then gonna slide down to Subtract and we'll add operands. So these operands will be all of these roads that we just made. And then we can click OK, click Enter. Everything else should be the same. Something really interesting that we can do with these corners, if I zoom in on one, we can come down and click either fill it, which should Oh, I need to select all. Select all your lines, <laughs> then come in to fill it, and we can fill the corners out to have sort of a rounded edge. And then there's chamfer as well, which has more of a square edge. So today we might look at fillet. So I'm going to put them at about a 10 meter, a little change for all of them. You can instead select one of the lines uh, we can make it slightly different so as we can see that this edge this line in the middle is line five so we might have that one as a straight and yep the line six down the bottom we might also have that as a straight so we can see that we can create some interesting and fun things so in this intersection we've got this rounded fillet down here, actually, no, maybe I do need to have something on this end. <laughs> this end, we've got the chamfer. Alright, so we're going to clone this base rectangle. Um, I actually might call that the base this time, that way we know what we're talking about. So we're going to click on it, go edit, clone, reference. We're going to name this one buildings. And if we go into our little modifying panel, we see this line, so anything that happens Above that line only happens to this, anything below the line happens to it all. So then what we can do, we can just hide the base for now. With this building, um, we can try a greeble, but greeble needs something to actually work on. So firstly, we're going to quantify. So we're going to come down to quantify mesh. Uh, we're going to put in, probably we'll try this five. Um, you might need to put edge faces on to be able to see this. So that's sort of reasonably sizey. Um, you don't want to plug in Greeble um, at zero, sorry, into the grip, into the quantify, otherwise it will crash. Um, and then from that, we can chuck a Greeble on top of it. So then with our Greeble, uh, we can go into these panels. We might change our max height to 50, have something fairly big, and our minimum height as 10. So make sure we've got some buildings in there. Uh, you can taper them if you want them to all thin in. A bit funny. Um, usually keep it as zero. You can have some little air conditioning units and everything on top. Uh, we probably need those a couple meters and the size can probably be reduced in there. So that'll be really helpful in these different widgets down here to add things like air conditioning units or things on the top of your building. At the moment, we are going to keep off just to have a little bit of a look there. So if we pan around it, we can see that our streets now have some buildings in it. So you could then even create a little walkthrough down the street to show what some buildings look like. Uh, the greatest thing with this 3S Max is since everything is on top of each other, into a more up view, we'll be able to see it. But if we turn these center lines on, select it, and uh, come down here and get a vertice, we can see that that updates live. So you can do that with any line. So if we select, oops, make sure you unselect that to be able to select the next one. 
Um, you can do segments, you can do splines. So I might want to rotate this one around this way a little bit. Just to be able to get some more different shapes in there. So it's all procedural, so it all updates automatically, which is really, really cool and makes it really easy for any live updates and any edits that you want to do. I'm also going to grab that base again and clone that once more uh, and name that footpath. We are now possibly going to turn the buildings off. We can have a little bit of a look, turn those off. We're going to select these footpaths, come under the modifier, and we're going to do a sweep. So we are going to come down and find the types. There we go. We're going to do a bar. So for zoom in, bar is probably the most common for easy architecture. Uh, we're going to do a length of maybe 0.1, so that's in our height. And width, um, you just got to remember that it's going out from that centre line. So we probably want the footpath to be maybe four meters. So we're going to come out and do eight. Oh, that's a bit small on the road. Then we'll do five. How does that look with our buildings? Oop, let's change the color of that one. What color haven't I used? Let's do the purple. Yeah, so we can now see them. Whoops. We can now see that they pop out the side of our buildings, so they should be fine at about five or maybe even six meters. We're just going to come down and place up some other settings so we can align from the center, which is what it is. If you want it from the outside, so it makes it a little bit easier, we can then make the width of the pathway is three. There we go. Oops. Um, so you can change your little offsets to go from different areas, mostly using sides and centre. Another really great one to tick is the union intersections. So on union intersections, banking and generate material data all clicked on. Now we're just going to also throw a plane underneath um, that'll just sort of reduce where your streets and everything are. I'll also need to make that 500 by 500 just to match what we've got. And we'll move that down. Or we can even Make it 600 by 600. And it can be just around the edge. There we go. So there we can see we've got almost a road now underneath. Right, so that is the end of that little tutorial showing the agreeable function and creating an example for city um, using different modifiers uh, and being able to edit things really quickly and easy by just clicking on it and Move it around and having it live update. So that's one of the greatest things about 3ds Max is the live update capacity and the ability to do quick things like this to put as even a background for your modeling 